Alright, good afternoon everybody. This is Dimitri. He's going to talk to you about Aldebaran Robotics and Open Source. Okay, so thanks for being here. Uh, so I'm Dimitri uh, Mareshkovsky and I work at Aldebaran Robotics uh, since four and a half days. Uh, so we are the company building this robot. Uh, so we have a stand in AW, so don't hesitate to, uh, uh, to go to our stand and talk with us. Uh, we've got uh, more robots doing more crazy stuff. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so just a few words about my company. So it's uh, it's uh, started uh, six years ago, and now we have uh, uh, more than 200 people working at Telburn, 50 just for the R&D. Uh, we have offices in Boston, in uh, uh, in Shanghai, and in Paris. But all the R&D is done in Paris. Uh, we have more than 2,000 uh, robots in the world, and uh, it's used by uh, something like uh, two or 300 uh, universities. Uh, so a few words about uh, the robot. Uh, so actually, this is the picture of the first uh, humanoid robot ever to be in the South Pole, and uh, that's someone from, uh, and so those are real penguins. So a few words about the robot. So uh, in 2006, we only had a, a very basic prototype. Uh, and the second uh, you see over there uh, is the one we used uh, to, uh, um, uh, to add the robot cup to uh, be the next uh, standard platform league. So the idea is that uh, since the uh, third prototype you see over there, uh, the now robot is used by the robot cup uh, for the standard platform, so this means that uh, you have two teams, each one has five nodes, and the nodes are playing soccer together. And since 2008, we've improved uh, the hardware, so now we've got a very robust robot. Uh, it can fall like uh, uh, 1,000 times over its own side and it doesn't break. Uh, so that's where we are now. So a few words about the robots. So there are tons of captors. Uh, so there are four microphones here, 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 and there. So you can do a sound localization and know uh, where people are, uh, when people are talking, where they are, uh, and look at them. Uh, it's got uh, two cameras, one over here and one at the bottom. So I can see in front of him and can also see how it's fit to avoid walking on obstacles and so on. Also, to avoid obstacles, he has two, uh, two sets of uh, ultrasounds. He also had, uh, has an inertial sensor, so when it uh, does like this, he knows it. Uh, and also use it to know when, when it's falling, and he can protect himself and then get up. Uh, he also got lots of uh, tactile sensors, so the head has tactile sensors, the hands also, uh, some bumpers here and there, and some pressure sensor uh, also here. Uh, and again, he used it to uh, stabilize his walking. Uh, it has 25 degrees of, of freedom. Uh, you can control uh, the, the motors one by one, or you can do uh, very advanced stuff, like just set the robot, go to there. It's going to compute all the steps and do the working and so on. Uh, so the robot comes also with a lot of uh, tools. So we've got a big community of developers and users. Uh, we've got a developer program, I'll say more about this later. And uh, we also have lots of tools to help you program the robot. So we have a graphical uh, environment called Choreograph. And so you can just uh, program the robot by dragging boxes and connecting them. And we also have SDK in a lot of various programming languages like C++, Python, uh, Java, .NET, and so on. Uh, so this is an overview of the software uh, that we wrote. So we, uh, we do everything uh, from the mechatronics and the low-level firmware code up to uh, all the embedded software and the desktop software. So here you have a stack. Uh, so we've got the embedded software like the firmware and so on. Uh, on the head, so the head is the big, uh, it's supposed to be on a head. And at the bottom, you've got uh, a Linux, so it's based on Gen2, so it's a real Linux, uh, we give you a shared access and so on. 
Uh, above the, uh, the Linux, there is a daemon called HAL, which uh, is used to control the hardware and so on, so it, it handles all the communication uh, between the motors, the sensors, and so on. Above that, there is a layer called key messaging. So key messaging is just a core library that is used to uh, make process communicate together. Above key messaging, there is a lot of various models. So we offer you a huge API uh, and it's split it across uh, various modules. So we've got a module for motion, a module for walking, a module for speaking, and so on. Uh, so the whole stack with the HAL key messaging and the module is called Naoki. So this is our main uh, framework. And Naoki is able to run on the robot, but also uh, on your desktop for simulation. So of course, when it runs on the desktop, there are a few uh, things you don't have, like the hardware or uh, proprietary third party library, like uh, text-to-speech. Uh, but uh, you've got the same API. And above Naoki, you've got uh, lots of various applications. Uh, so for instance, uh, there was uh, one guy that wrote this application where uh, the robot had an alarm clock, and when it rang, the robot walked away, and so you have to get up the bed and follow the robot and turn the alarm off. Um, yeah, one last thing. So the key messaging core library is also available on desktop, so Linux, Mac, Windows. And uh, so that's how you can write code on your desktop that is going to communicate with the robot. Uh, and of course, we've got uh, this SDK and the documentation available too. Uh, so one last thing. So uh, Alderon Robotics does not only do uh, this uh, in our robot. Uh, we also are involved in a European project called Romeo. So uh, this is this, uh, this big human wing robot is one meter 40. And this one is really going to be in, a, it's really supposed to be in the people's homes. So it, it has been designed to be able to do stuff like uh, uh, carry heavy stuff, open doors, uh, walking, uh, walking stairs, and, and so on. Uh, next, to, uh, next to Romeo, uh, we've got uh, the jazz robot. So Jazz, uh, Jazz is a robot that is designed to uh, uh, be a, a telepresence robot. So basically, you can be in your home and you have the robot walking around the office uh, with a little camera on top. And uh, so people can see you and talk to the robot and you can see them from your house. So if someone has here has seen the Big Bang Theory, uh, there is an episode where Sheldon does exactly use this kind of tools. And so the fiction has become reality. That's, that's a bit funny. Uh, so what do we do at Telegram, and why do we have uh, these robots? So the main idea is that we want uh, to bring uh, robots to, people hope, to people's home and help mankind. So we want to have uh, robots that really help people. So the big goal is to have this convenient robot that is uh, at home and is, uh, I don't know, doing your dishes, uh, uh, watching elderly people, helping blind people, uh, this kind of thing. So this is a really big goal. And to do that, uh, we chose to start with a smaller one, but a robot that is designed so that it's easy to interact with him. Uh, it's, uh, that's why we have all these sensors and so on. And that's why we are building this huge community, both uh, with a, a searcher for all the artificial intelligence we need, all the um, research we need in order to achieve this goal. And also, uh, this is why we work with lots of developers like you uh, to create the applications that are going to run uh, on this robot on the future. So that's the main vision of uh, Aldebaran. So of course, uh, we are at FOSDEM, so we are going to talk about open source. And I'm just going to take a, a little time to uh, uh, to tell you two stories. Uh, so by the way, this is uh, this was taken at uh, Linux uh, tag. Uh, so we do uh, like going to uh, this kind of conference with lots of uh, developers and talk to them. We are, I really think we've got uh, uh, lots of energy to share between the community of developers at Alderman and the other, the other communities. Uh, so the first story is uh, now in the Wi-Fi. So maybe some of you, some of you know uh, WPA Supplicant. Uh, so it's a really low-level tool, and uh, in the first version of the robot, 
we had a very strange web page with some old scripts that were trying to configure the web page supplicant. It was a big mess. Uh, we couldn't do uh, roaming and so on. It, it was very hard. And we had this uh, um, Wi-Fi uh, driver that was a bit buggy, and we were a bit stuck. And so that was three, uh, three years ago. Uh, so what happened? What happened is that there was some really nice people uh, working on the kernel, and so they patched uh, the driver, and now we have a really nice driver that works uh, very well. Uh, we've got uh, also this community that is maintaining uh, the wireless compact uh, layer for us, and we use that. And uh, we also have a guy uh, at Alibron uh, who is working actively on a project called Conman, so Conman is a bit like Network Manager, but for, the, uh, for embedded uh, systems. And if my desktop is able to be connected to the robot right now, you can see it's auto-linked. Uh, that's because of a contribution of Aldebaran to Conman. Uh, so next up, we are going to talk about build system. I know there are lots of uh, uh, build system around here and lots of stocks, so we've got uh, our story too, because obviously, uh, that's something we have to do. We have to maintain a distribution for the robot. Uh, we have a SDK to have on three different platforms and so on. So that's really a big topic for us. Uh, so at the very beginning, we were using uh, BuildRoot, so it was the first uh, attempt we made. And uh, uh, the, good, uh, the good part was that we had a very fine uh, control uh, about compilation, and it was, uh, it was easy to use. But uh, there was not that much package at the time. It was in 2007. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we, we stopped using Bill Roots, but we still have a very, uh, we have still have people at Aldebaran that are very enthusiastic about this project. Uh, and uh, they are still contributing to Bill Roots. Uh, next, we use uh, Open Embedded. So Open Embedded is a real distribution. Uh, we like it, but uh, the thing with Open Embedded is that it's really targeted for cross compilation. And actually, we don't really need cross compilation because the robot has an Intel uh, inside, uh, x86. And so it was actually not uh, that useful uh, to use Open Embedded for that. Uh, and also, there are no support for binary packages, so we had to recompile everything every time we wanted to do an image. Uh, and yeah, just for the fun, some people consider putting Windows Embedded on the narrow. Uh, they try to develop a, a, a video driver for three months, and then they came back and say, no, it doesn't work. Uh, so since 2012, we switched to Gen2, and we are really happy with Gen2 because it's a source distribution, so we can control uh, how we compile, we can optimize stuff. It's really nice. It really, it really has a nice uh, community. The recipe we use are very close to what Upstream does, which is always a good thing. And there, there is support for binary package, so we can uh, really use that and avoid uh, recompiling everything all the time. And uh, yeah, so far so good, we are really happy. Uh, this is a picture of now uh, just saying hello to the Gen2 guys, again at Linux tag. Uh, this is something that came up uh, really uh, recently in the last release made by Aldebaran. So we've got uh, this open now virtual machine. Uh, so the idea is that you get uh, exactly the same environment as the robot, but it's running on your desktop, and you have all the compilation tools inside the VM. So you can just uh, type email on the VM, and you've got your binary package, and you can just deploy it to the robot. So that's really nice. And uh, one reason we did that is that we wanted to make sure it was easy to write application for the robot using third-party libraries. Uh, say, for instance, you want to write an application for the robot that is doing QR code. There are lots of libraries uh, for doing that already, uh, so there are no point in uh, people trying to recompile that all the time, and you can, you can just uh, use uh, the Gen2 work, uh, do the binary package, and then set it on the robot. Uh, and of course, uh, if, we, if you take uh, the, the total number of lines of code we have today at Aldebaran uh, that we wrote ourselves, both for the embedded system and for the desktop tools, uh, it's a total of 6 million lines of code, and there's something like uh, 30,000 lines of CMake code. 
because CMake is called Perform and we need that. And we wrote a very nice layer on top of that, which shows key build. So it's uh, yet another build system for C++ and CMake. I know there are tons of them, uh, but this one is better. So <laughs> why is it better? So it's open source, of course. Uh, it's, uh, it supports cross-compilation. Uh, it supports Linux, Mac, Windows. It also supports Visual Studio. Uh, it also supports binary packages for the desktop, too. Uh, something you, you seldom see. And it also supports making uh, uh, software that you can redistribute later. So you can just uh, uh, compile uh, your software and put all the library together and uh, give the pre-compiled stuff uh, to other people to use. Uh, so it's all written in Python. Uh, with the CMake layer on top. Uh, it's available on GitHub, so you can check it out if you want. And the last feature we added was a uh, key build deploy, so you can just type this command, and it's going to cross-compile uh, your uh, source code, send it to the robot, and configure the remote debugging for you. So that's really nice. Uh, so I want to take the time, because I'm here for them, to just say a big thank you to the community. Uh, there are tons of great, great tools that are done uh, by the open source communities uh, from uh, CMake to Python, obviously. Uh, the guy from Qt Creator, Qt Creator, I just went uh, to see them uh, yesterday to just say thanks. Uh, that's one of the uh, good things that's for them is that you can just uh, go to people and put a name uh, in front of the software used every day. Uh, that is really nice. Uh, and we also use uh, lots of tools that the open source project are using too, uh, like Gerrit for the code review and Jenkins. Uh, so Jenkins don does everything for us uh, from the automatic testing to the uh, automatization of the deliveries and so on. And so what we want to achieve is to uh, give back to the community a bit of what uh, we've taken. Uh, so the big motto is created by us, improved by everybody, which is such a nice slogan for open source. Uh, so we are officially showing code since uh, May 2011. Uh, we've got a GitHub web page where you can see all the projects uh, that we opened. So there are a few of them right now, but many more to come. Uh, Kibil is released under a BSD license. And uh, yeah, just uh, just check it, check out our web page on uh, GitHub. Uh, our account is just in Aldebaran. <coughs> uh, so next, I'm going to say a few words about uh, what is going on in the future. Uh, so right now, um, the parts that are open source in the robot are the distribution. Of course, everything. Uh, Every time we use a GPL library, we give you access to the uh, patch we've made and also even the, the Git project. So there is a, uh, for instance, there is our fork of the kernel on GitHub if you want to check it out. Uh, but the, right now, the core library, the communication library is closed and we want to open that. Uh, we want to open that for many reasons that you uh, already know, like it's easier to uh, uh, support new platform because Aldebaran doesn't have to pre-compile it for everyone. Uh, it's easier to adapt it to other build system. It's easier to adapt it to other framework. We know there are tons of uh, open robotics framework in the in the wild, like Cross, for instance. And what we did with key messaging is to have this open uh, library, open format, open wiring format, so that it's easy to tweak it or to uh, plug it uh, with with other frameworks and so on. Uh, so I was, taking, I was talking about the developer program uh, 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 before. So what we have here is that we have a, a very uh, nice environment for developers. Uh, so there is a form, so you can put uh, your software here. You can share the source code with everyone. Uh, if you go to see our stand, uh, you see many demonstrations. All the source code for this demonstration are here. Uh, you can also, there is also a store so you can publish applications or sell applications and download them. Uh, and, uh, and so how you get in is uh, you fill a form to prove you are able to program and then you buy a robot for 3,000 euros. 
So what you need to know is that the uh, public price for the boat is uh, 12,000 euros. In fact, by selling you uh, at this uh, price, uh, we want you to uh, create application for the robot. Uh, so if you heard about the uh, now dev days, so that's something we do uh, uh, quite often. We invite all the members from the developer forum to come and see us at Aldebaran in Paris uh, to just hack with us. So this is a picture uh, from one of these events. And so there was something like 50 people just hacking on the robot all weekend, uh, staying very late on the Saturday and so on. And there was a competition, and the goal was to write the best application possible. And here you, uh, you are seeing a picture of that. So it was a physical coach. So the robot was doing push-ups on the ground, and then look at you and say, no, do the same. Uh, so the guy who uh, won the prize uh, uh, had the opportunity to come work with us uh, uh, for two days. So he spent two days with the people from Aldebaran, the guys that wrote Kroger, the guys that make the demo and so on to improve his application. And it was such a nice experience. Uh, yeah, a few, uh, a few stuff more. Uh, what's really nice with the developer program and Aldebaran is that it's really close. So uh, we do some uh, beta releases, for instance. And I remember one time we uh, send a message to the forum saying the beta is available. And the next two hours, we've got tons and tons of downloads and people are sending bug reports and so on. So that's really great. So if you join the developer forum, you can just ask someone and you can be in touch with the guy that is responsible for this feature. It's really open and easy to, uh, to share ideas and, and so on. Uh, we are also hiring. So Aleman is still working on very big projects, uh, all these robots, all this huge uh, goal to achieve. Uh, we've got lots of various topics, lots of job offers. Uh, so everything is on, is on the website called Shape the World. So just shape the world dot, dot uh, You can see all the job description here. And don't worry, really send your resume anyway, because sometimes we just get a resume and then we no, we want to hire this guy, and we find out a job description later. So don't worry. And yes, come and join us. We are a very uh, happy uh, uh, company. We have uh, uh, a very young and enthusiastic team. So this is an example of uh, our building. So uh, we have this very nice uh, terrace open in the, in the air, so it's a great place to be in summer. So. Yeah. Uh, and again, one, one of our mottos, so this is work hard. So here you can see uh, people working on the, uh, here. So it's, uh, they are working on the uh, prototype for the Romeo. So it was the first prototype. Uh, here you can see people fixing robots. And the bottom, it's, uh, it was during the uh, universal exposition. So, uh, we have often uh, big challenges to meet, and uh, that's, that's also really exciting. Uh, but we also know how to party, so there are a few photos. So here you've got a picture of Nao during uh, Christmas. Uh, here's a Nao Lebevort, so, it was a, so there was a RoboCup in Germany, and so we sent some people officially from Aldebaran for support and so on. And there was a few geeks in, uh, inside the company that said, oh, we want to come too. And so they just took a bus and uh, drank some beer and be in the audience and just uh, making sure everyone was happy and having this really weird uh, uh, fake hair. And uh, the guy you see here uh, with the big smile and the big hair uh, who looks a bit uh, uh, like having a big time uh, is the CEO of Aldebaran Robotics. Uh, so uh, that's the end for uh, this talk. So I'm just going to show you a little uh, demonstration. Uh, so what you are going to see is the uh, first time uh, we have uh, an open stack. So everything that is on my desktop is open source. And the only stuff that is closed in open source are really uh, uh, the implementation, like the test to speed that is proprietary or uh, uh, really a few stuff. But all the core libraries and the communication format are open. Uh, so let me show that. 
Just to switch to a better profile. So, so here is what the source code looks like. So you create a session, and then you connect to the robot. So this one is called Pedro. So we've got a, a nice AVI functionality working out of the box. And then you create a service, and then you make it uh, say something. So let's start with uh, just to prove I'm not uh, making it up. Let's start with Hello World because, oops, sorry. <laughs> Let's start with Hello World. Uh, so the example is in Python, but uh, again, uh, C++, Java, and so on. Uh, Hello World. Yeah. So now the god of the programmation are with us, so we can start seeing something else. Uh, so let's try. Oops. Let's try for them because we are in for them, and that would be a shame not to have that. Hello, FOSDEM. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, that was it for uh, this talk. So we can just uh, uh, put my last slide. If I can do that. Uh, yeah, so of tooling, so the, uh, we've got a documentation available, so you can browse source code. So uh, the example you are going to see are not using key messaging because key messaging is not finished yet, but soon. Uh, uh, this, we've got the Aldebaran uh, uh, GitHub available, so you can see all the projects we have. Uh, here's my email if you want, if you have any question. Uh, and again, uh, there is this uh, shapetheworld.fr website you can uh, join to see our job offers and uh, look around. So. Uh, Come and see us at the stand six. Uh, come and see me afterwards. We've got uh, badges, we've got uh, brochures, we've got uh, everything. And uh, yeah, if you have a question, I think I'm uh, a bit in advance. We can take them. Yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't. Uh... <laughs> so everyone applauded. So I did not. Uh... So I've got another example. Uh, so here we are using uh, various services. Uh, so we've got a service called Motion. So you can see there is some really high level stuff like wake up and rest. Uh, we've got the text to speech we've seen and we've got the behavior manager. Uh, so basically you can install behavior on the robot and just play them. So we can try to do that too. Uh, let's do this. Hello world. Uh, <laughs> I won't make it work live on, it, on a table like that because uh, nah, I'm taking enough risk already. <laughs> but if you want to see the robot works, you can uh, go to our stand. Uh, I've got this uh, really nice, simple demonstration. So the robot uh, has uh, wave his hands. You can just took him by hand and he, he follows you. So uh, that's a really nice way to see him work. Look to your left. Here I am. Yeah. Um, you said in the beginning something about 25 degrees of freedom. Yeah. Um, do they have any other purpose than waving hands or some some impressive stuff like that? I mean, are they for some functionality or are they just some kind of public relation? I'm not sure I'm following, but uh, the question was uh, what the robot can do apart from moving. But I mean, um, 
25 degrees of, uh, of freedom sound uh, spectacular. I, I even think, well, I, I agree that it's, uh, it's quite a task to coordinate them, but um, do you really need that many degrees of freedom to perform the task you are wanting to do with, with your robot? Yeah, I see your point. Uh, so <clears throat> the question is, why do we have so many degrees of freedom? Uh, so the answer is that because we wanted a humanoid robot, so we wanted the head, we wanted it to uh, be able to sit down and to uh, walk and so on. It was really uh, important for us to have this humanoid robot uh, for two reasons. Uh, first, the fact that he uh, looks like this and he's a bit like a child and so on makes it very easy to interact with him. And also the fact that we want to have uh, robots in the people's home in the future, we need to have uh, humanoid robot because uh, your home is designed for humans. If you think about stuff like uh, uh, taking off the garbage or opening a door and so on, you have to be like a humanoid robot to do that. So that's why we choose to have all this complexity and that's why we uh, work uh, to make uh, the work uh, this way or uh, all this high level uh, and complex way of making the robot move. Okay, we have another question. Hi. Um, how long the battery like last? I mean, um, what's the autonomy of, of the robot's average? Yeah, so the battery is, uh, the life of the battery is two or three hours, depending on what you are doing with the robot, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, has it a, a cradle so the robot can go by himself to the uh, recharge area or something like that? Uh, there is a project uh, uh, like this, so it's called uh, the Now Energy Station. Mm -hmm. uh, so the idea is that you have um, a pod and the robot can just uh, walk backward and there is a, uh, a magnet. And so it connects to the magnet, so it can just move around freely because there is a, a little cord. And then when it wants to get out, it just do that. Oops, click, click. And uh, then it can just get away and continue. So we did, uh, Alibon did the uh, hardware part, the mechanical design and so on, because that's what we are good at. And uh, then we started uh, working on uh, all the navigation problems and so on, and we just uh, give the hardware to people from the developer program and said to them, okay, just uh, make it happen, make the navigation system work, uh, make the robot realize the battery is empty and just go back to the next station and so on. So uh, that's what I was saying earlier. Uh, we've got this uh, huge goal, which is having robots in people's homes. And so Aldebaran is doing the part of uh, the industrialization, the hardware, uh, selling it, uh, uh, doing the support, and so on. And we work with people uh, like you, like developers, uh, to help with us and create with us. Yeah. <coughs> Yes, so I understand that you mechanically have 25 de de degrees of uh, free freedom. Yeah. Um, I kind of understand that you have an application processor and a real-time part to control it, right? Yeah. So my question is, um, how many de de degrees of freedom are you able to control at each each time? I think it's not 20 25, right? Uh, yeah, actually, yes. Uh, so yeah. What's, what's happening is that the... Um, at the core of the, in the torso, there is a ARM processor. Uh, so there is no operating system on it. And its only job is to uh, take all the inputs from every uh, sensors and send it back to Naoki so that we can do some high level uh, uh, control loop and, and so on. And then uh, receive the command and send it back to the motors. So this is really simple. Uh, it does uh, always the same thing every time. So we can keep the real time loop at a rate that is 10 milliseconds. And then we have a, a much uh, lower and more precise loop inside the motors. Uh, it's on F-peak. And here you've got some millisecond feedback. So that's how we do it. Thanks. Yeah. The um, real-time motor controller, the software that that's running, is that open source or? At least, is it technically possible to replace it? Uh, you mean the the part that controls the hardware, or the, uh, the, the part just above the low-level motor control? Yes. Uh, 
So the firmware is closed, uh, mostly for security reason because we don't want you to uh, burn the motors or things like that. Uh, but I was uh, talking about the uh, feedback loop from the HAL, and actually you can plug it, uh, you can plug yourself here if you want. Uh, so we've got people doing that. So uh, 10 milliseconds is enough uh, if you want to try to uh, redo your own work, for instance, and we've got people doing it. Uh, yeah, and just to elaborate a little bit about your uh, question. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that the, uh, we want to open our SDK. So I'm not sure yet uh, what is going to be open, what is going to be closed. I know the core library uh, for communication is going to be open. And I think what I would like to happen is to have an open uh, API, uh, which is cross-robot. And so we could have a proprietary Aldebaran implementation and then open implementation. And I think that would be the best way to do it. I think that uh, someone should ask this question. Um, yeah. Does it have the three laws? <laughs> Sorry? Does it have the three laws? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, how can I answer that? Uh, so the answer is no, but uh, <laughs> uh, but obviously yes. We, uh, what's really interesting with this kind of uh, robot is that you start seeing uh, stuff that was really in fiction uh, happening in reality, and uh, that's really nice about working in a labor is that you, you can uh, be at the uh, really at the place where things are changing. Uh, so we've got people thinking really hard about uh, what is going to happen with this kind of uh, tool and what are the consequences uh, uh, of having uh, uh, a robot interacting with humans and so on. Uh, there are several possible answers to that. Uh, one thing I know is that when I started working on that, I was uh, uh, in a mood like, okay, doing robot is fun and I just want to have fun. Uh, but there's more to that. Uh, and in other robotics, uh, something like two or three years ago, there were, there were people using the robot to help autistic children uh, because uh, the problem with autistic children is that they have trouble interpreting what uh, people are feeling uh, and reading their feelings. And the nice thing about this robot is that it looks human and can express emotion in a very simple way. And so it was much easier for the autistic children to interact with the robot. And what happened is that uh, once uh, the, ch the autistic children was out of his own closed world, uh, thanks to the robot, we've got some doctors who could help him out. So we really, help, we are really helping people to, uh, uh, to be better. And that's something I was not expecting at all. Yeah. So uh, does the robot have um, adaptive tragic uh, planning uh, coupled to uh, video recognition? Say, for instance, it has to pick up a moving part uh, yeah, so we, uh, you have the basic block to do that because you've got some uh, visual recognition. You can uh, uh, analyze the uh, um, uh, video stream for the robot and so on. Uh, so this, uh, the strategy we have is that we can to we give you uh, the basic blocks, uh, but also now we, are, we, we started adding more stuff. Like for instance, in the web.12 version, you've got nothing like that. In web.14, you've got a, a C++ module that is using uh, the camera to make sure the robot works straight. And so this is happening, actually. So it's, uh, I know it's some subjects uh, people want to uh, look for and research and do themselves. And we also know that people need something that works out of the box. So we do a bit both. Excuse me. Uh, my question is that uh, here, yeah. Does your control system have this capability of walking on rough surfaces? Uh, so the, the work of the robot, uh, so it works on very different kind of uh, floors, uh, like for instance, uh, wood or carpet or things like that, and can uh, switch from carpet to wood without falling. Um, because we've got uh, a closed loop like this, so he can also uh, work on his own cord, things like that. But obviously, if you start having some uh, big slopes, or, uh, or yeah, you can make the robot fall. But again, 
the idea is that the robot is robust enough to just get up when it falls, so it's not that hard. Not that a problem. Here, here, on your right. Yeah. Are you competing or planning to compete uh, in a RoboCup competition? One of the... Uh, so what we do at Alemaron is that we uh, sell the robot for uh, the RoboCup teams. So we don't, uh, it would not be very fair if we were playing to. Uh, so the answer is no, but uh, we, uh, as I said earlier, we follow the, we follow the RoboCup. And when it's close to, uh, to where we are, we just go there to enjoy and, uh, and just uh, yeah, party with the competition and so on. How many teams are using your robots for the competition? I don't really recall right now, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I really don't know. Thank you. Uh, I have a question here on your left. Yeah. Left. <laughs> so for your Robert, is there any specific uh, safety regulatory rules you have to follow? And if so, uh, how do you expect the software you developed, uh, even the third-party software, uh, to follow such rules? Thank you. Uh, so the question was, uh, is there rules when you want to write software for the robot? Is that the... Sorry. So the question is that, um, do you need to pass some safety regulatory rules uh, before your robot can be sold? And if that is true, you have to pass some safety regulatory rules. Uh, how do you impose such rules in your software? Especially the software that is uh, you just showed, demoed the Python code, uh, which can be written by someone else, like people here. Yeah, that's a big subject. Uh, we don't really have the answer yet. So right now we just keep everything open so you can you even have root access to the robot actually. Uh, we know it's a big topic because we, if, uh, obviously you can't uh, afford that if you have a robot on people's home because what's new with this robot is that, is that you have uh, lots of privacy issues and uh, so it's still a work in progress actually. I don't have any good answer for that. Uh, we want to have something a bit like a, uh, we're in a mix, a bit like between Apple, Apple, Apple and uh, Android, where in the Apple market you have to submit uh, and audit your source code by Apple and so on. And in the Android market you've got lots of different applications. So it's, it's still a work in progress. Obviously you don't want to have a dangerous application or uh, software just does to stream what is going to happen in your house uh, to the website without you knowing. Uh, so it's again a work in progress. So I'm still with the 25 DOF and uh, the humanoid behavior, uh, the humanoid movement. Uh, if I would scramble my Rubik's cube, would it, would it be, would now be able to, to handle it? I mean, mechanically, not, uh, in, not a strategy. Uh, the holds are not that uh, advanced, actually. So it's just, uh, it's just a mechanical device, and you can just close and open them. Uh, but my other answer is, uh, why don't you try it now? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Hello. Yeah. On the left. Uh, I have a question. Do you have any plans of releasing the hardware as open hardware? Uh, not right now. Uh, no. <laughs> That's all. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, okay, so thank you for your time and uh, thank you.